special guest with us, uh, Mr. Abdurrahman Mahadi, uh, chairman of ONLF. Speaking of Pertugan, NEBA is not an independent institution. So there's no point for us to participate in an election, we know it's rigged already. If you go to Oromia, you see the banks, 90% people are walking there are almost. If you go to Amhara, you see who people walking in the federal, federal offices everywhere. All of them are Amharas. Go to Somali state. 90%, 99% is people from the north. So, so if you think, just if we have this imaginary idea of one Ethiopia, it's not, it's not true. Go to Somali state, only, only the elite, few elites speak Amharic. They don't know the Amharic language. I don't know the Amharic language. I don't have any idea about it. I don't eat the same food, I don't close, take the same clothes, I don't have the same religion with many of them. So to become one, first of all, the diversity has been respected. Well, we have got doubts about this activist issue. Mustafa became very active when his brother was killed. Not before that. For the last 27 years, the Somali people have been killed by daily basis. More than 50,000 are missing. Many women were raped. You know, we, we, did you hear about him before that? For the last two, three years? No, he was just, maybe he will write an article, something like that, but he was working for the UN in Jain. Hello, dear viewers. This is Yasped on Ubuntu TV. We have a special program for you today. Uh, we have a special guest also here with us, uh, Mr. Abdurrahman Mahadi, uh, chairman of ONLF. We are really pleased to have you here. Me too, this is a great privilege to come to your studio. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, let's get forward to our uh, questions. Okay. Um, back in 2018, uh, during the, the so-called reform, uh, one of the breaking news, one of the hypes was uh, uh, your organization's decision to drop armed struggle and uh, come back to the country and get registered uh, in uh, uh, in a lawful uh, manner, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think things are going well now. Uh, you dropped out of the election race. What happened? First of all, in ONF, this is not the first time they opted for peace and to try to seek the rights of the Somali people through peaceful means. In 1991, we did the same. We came back, and during the uh, you know, EPRDF, TPLF rule and uh, transitional period. Yeah. We also participated in the election. We won about 87% of the votes. We built our first government and within two years, we were provoked and then the, the war happened and it continued for 23 years. And then when the change came in Ethiopia, that change did not come simply. Uh, it took a long time. It took a different stage from those wars, all those conflicts through the popular uprising, which well, that was the, the, the final trigger of it. but. All people in Ethiopia actually struggle against, you know, the former regime. And uh, are they, when this transformation happened, and by that time we had many alliances. We had alliance with, with Gimbot 7. We have got alliance with OLF. We had alliance with Sidama Liberation Front. We have alliance with the Gambelans, with the other Ethiopians, in order to bring democracy into Ethiopia. So when this happened, it, we were very euphoric, and we expected that the, the new change will bring a new, you know, opening political space, new hope, and the people in Ethiopia will, for the first time, after almost 100 and something years of constant fighting and conflict within different sectors, this will be, have been something, you know, a good chance, actually, because we live in the 21st century, the world is changing, democracy has got stronger, the world is becoming one village, and everybody knows what's happening. For example, in the early 60s, 70s, we thought only Somalis were being oppressed or we have this difficulty. But later, as things moved through the information age, we now understood every Ethiopian in Ethiopia have got the same difficulty, whether they are in Oromia, in Amhara, or Sidama, or even Tigray. People, the normal people are always marginalized on the edge, footless, shoesless, without any, any, any public support. There's only these elitist groups at the center, which always use this big name Ethiopia to oppress the rest. So for us, it was a new beginning. So we hope, you know, we all come together, build a new, a, a, a new, a new, a new, a new, a new, a new country that where each nation's right is respected. So when we come back here, we, the first thing we did was decide to relinquish arms voluntarily. Without anybody forcing us, we relinquished our arms. We demobilized our liberation army. And we had specific agreements with the Ethiopian government of that time. The first thing was that we will have our right to pursue our political right 
through peaceful means, without any hindrance. The other one was the rehabilitation of the fighters and uh, to incorporate them into security force to give them other livelihood. So we had many, 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 the agreement was very, very concise, but there were also in agreements. And uh, what happened was uh, when we came after the first three months honeymoon with these big galas of welcoming us, you know, immediately we saw what, what was happening. The, uh, the regional administration blocked the opening of our offices. I remember, so I started harassing. We consistently complained to the federal government. My action was taken. We decided that, you know, since peace is very hard, very elusive, we should be patient. We swallowed many things. We followed the rule law of the rule, registered, and then we started exercising our political rights. But we had many, many, many impediments. And uh, in 2019, November, we held our first you know, Congress inside the country for almost 20 years. And uh, where that was, I was elected before I was a foreign minister and then secretary general, then I became the chairman. Immediately, the regional administration declared war on Ireland. Because I was elected, they didn't like me. The current you know, leader didn't like me. And he took away all the amenities given us before, the cars, everything, and immediately, he started in investing in dividing the organization. We complained to this about Navy, but nothing happened. And finally, when the election time came, uh, the first test was the registration of the candidates. In the Somali region, there are 300 candidates, 23 for the, uh, 24 for the, including Dirraba for the federal parliament, and uh, 272 for the regional seats. So we went to the polls, we started to register for our, our candidates. Uh, they, they just refused our members to register. They either blocked them, they closed the offices, they did a lot of harassments. So we managed only to register 100 of our candidates. We wrote an official letter to Nebe, and we brought all the evidence, video evidence. We were speaking to, uh, you know, uh, to Madame Pertugan on, a, on, on an hourly basis. So Nebe actually looked into the issue and then decided, because they tried to influence people on the ground to stop what they were doing, but even she was insulted on some levels, like in Liban, personally. And uh, what happened, uh, Nebe decided to register our members in Addis Ababa. So 140 candidates were registered in Addis Ababa, and we lost almost 60 candidates through that process. We managed only to register to, uh, 240 candidates. So that was the first test. And then the next one came when it came to the, the campaigning. Our members were either beaten, harassed. Some of the, our candidates were either bribed, given money. Some of them were put in detention. And uh, we also complained to neighbors. Some of them were released. And finally, we also lost also another 15 members, our candidates, because either they were bribed or they were afraid. Mm. Their families were put pressure on. So they used every trick in the, in, in the book to, to actually block us from accessing our political rights. Despite that, we persisted on in trying to be reasonable and see the next phase. So in, uh, in, in March, at the beginning of May, the, the registration of the voters started. So the agreement was, and that's actually how the world does you know, registrations. We were supposed to have our agents on the ground. We were supposed to know how many cars were brought to the polling stations or the, 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 the constituencies. We were never told that. We just saw the other day all the cars in the town being divided among you know houses of PP members. Only a few cars brought to the to the to the state, you know registration stations, and even some of the members are refused to register. We took pictures of it. We saw what's happening from from Moyale up to uh, uh, Jigjiga. The same thing is happening everywhere. So we took all the pictures. We we make a very very strong complaint to Nebe, including the other political parties. And uh, Nebe initially actually looked into the issue and they said, okay, we are going to investigate. And they postponed the election, Somali election for three months, mm -hmm. including other parts of Ethiopia. And we brought all the evidence. Initially, we, there was a big relief from the feeling we were getting from Nebe was that they are going to look into this. And the, the investigation team was delayed. First thing happened was they just sent partial investigation. They didn't do all the country. There were key, you know, constituencies in, in Dawa, Liban, Afder, Nogop, Error area, 
parts of you know uh, Gabridhar and uh, Warder area. So they just took just few of them. So we're expecting this will be a sample, and then this what comes out of this will be for the wider. We told them we consider this a sample, but they said no, no, they refused. So we said okay, let's see what comes out of this. And then we sent them uh, our positions. We told them for a fair election to happen, we need three things. We need, first of all, a new cards, because all the cards are in the hands of PP. The other thing, we need neutral Navy officers there, because the Navy officers in the Somali state were all working government employees. They're either teachers or they were health workers, and most of them were intimidated. Other, if you if you don't. Uh, 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 work with us, you're going to lose your job. That's exactly what happened to our members. Now, yesterday, someone came to me to in, in my hotel, one of our candidates from, from Liban, the Kasuftu. He was a health worker because he, he was a candidate for ANLF. His salary was stopped and he was just thrown out of the jobs. So that is the way they were behaving to us. So finally, uh, we said we need uh, independent, you know, candidates from even the rest of Ethiopia, wherever it comes. We don't care whether they come from Hara or Oromia or southern Debuk countries or even from Afar, wherever. We need some people who are neutral, first of all, Navy officers, and then we need these cards to be changed since you have got three months, and we need independent security because the people who are manning these polling stations are militias, not even the Liu police. And the militias are under the command of the district commissioner. That was the people who are blocking us from registering. So we said, unless those conditions are met, there will be no election and we cannot participate. So Nabi, after waiting for three months, they just said, there's no problem, everything is fine. They brought a few cards, the same cards again, to certain constituencies and said, hey, we are going to hold an election the way it was before. So there's no point for us to participate in an election. We know it's rigged already. All the cards are in the, in the hands of the, of the uh, 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 PP candidates. Okay, I have a follow-up question on the election process, but I, I want to ask you one question before that. Mm -hmm. um, do you regret your decision to drop arms and uh, start struggling in a peaceful way? No, no. We see peace. I pe mean, watching all this happening, mm. do you regret your decision now? No, we take a strategic principal decision to, to go through peaceful means. We don't regret that. We don't regret that. What we regret is that, that we were betrayed. But at the same time, we believe, you know, peace is very important. That's Who why we... Who do you think uh, betrayed you? The federal government or the... Both of them, both of them. Because the regional government cannot do anything without the willingness of the federal government. We have been very supportive of the federal government. We have been, you know, always, you know, very hopeful that they will do change. But they didn't do anything. It's just one party rule. They opted for their party instead of for the wider peace in the, whole, in the Somali state. So uh, we, we no longer consider the, the federal government is free from this. Unless they were willing for them to ha this to happen, it's, well, I cannot put it on the, on the regional, regional administrator. Because he is he's under the rule, he's under the same party. We complain to the party here at the federal level, we complain to the prime minister. We did everything, we tried every office, but all the doors were blocked. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was watching uh, Madame Burtukan's press uh, briefing yesterday and uh, she was saying that the election was peaceful and it was very excellent. So, uh, but the things you're telling me uh, now are, are obvious, I think, uh, for anyone uh, who wants to see. Uh, what's, what's your take on, on uh, the National Board of... Uh, First, I, re I respect very much Ms. Pertukan. Hmm. She is, we used to struggle together. She was, she is actually an activist who fought for the rights of the Ethiopian people, went to prison. And in our dealing with us, we believe she is very honest, but I don't believe she has got power. I believe she has been coerced. Oh. I, I believe the, the, the Navy she is in, I think she's an individual. I don't believe she had my decision on what happened. That's my personal belief. I've got very co confidence in her. I know her. She's a very democratic person. So you don't think Nebe is an independent mm, institution? Not, not? I'm, I'm not speaking about, I'm speaking about Pertugan. Nebe is not an independent institution. Oh. As, as, as a lady, I have great respect for her. That's one thing. But if you look also at, at the way she spoke mm. when the declaration of the June election was said, if you go back to that clip, mm. she actually said that we have difficulty in the Somali region. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of, you know, actually, if you look at that clip, that was actually the real uh, Bertuga that I knew. Mm. So I believe uh, whatever happened between then and now, I don't know. 
Oh. Okay, yeah. Mustafa was also an excellent activist back in the days, right? I, I think many people would agree with, with this statement. Uh, he, when he uh, becomes uh, the president, the president of the Somali region, many people were optimistic. I think you were also optimistic. So, did did you think that he he wasn't fit for the job, or did power corrupt him? What happened to, to the region? Well, we have got doubts about this activist issue. Mustafa became very active when his brother was killed, not before that. Okay. For the last twenty-seven years, the, the Somali people have been killed by daily basis. More than fifty thousand are missing. Many women were raped. You know, we, we, did you hear about him before that? For the last two, three years? No, he was just, maybe he will write an article, something like that, but he was working for the UN enjoying and working for himself. The activists are people like us who have never worked for their lives. All we have been doing is fighting for our people more, for more than 50 years. So whatever his motive, I can understand if your brother has killed you, then you, you have to fight for, for, for the rights of your people. But anyway, Mustafa, I, will, I don't like very much to dwell on him, really, to, not to talk about him. But I don't believe he, he has, has done a good service for his people. It is, it's, it's on history, on record. This will stay on record for many years. And uh, uh, the change that happened in Ethiopia, he just took advantage of that. The peace that came did not come by Mustafa. The peace came because Oanlef and the Ethiopian federal government stopped fighting. If we take guns to tomorrow, there will be no peace in the Ogaden. Because we put down guns, and the Ethiopian government put down guns, that was why peace came. It was not brought by Mustafa or anybody. Mm. Although he, he claims that he has, you know, brought peace of this and this and this. It's, it's just because of the decision to lay down arms, that's why the Somali region is today peaceful. It's all a decision. And we hope we will keep it that way. That's what, our, that's what, that's what we believe we will do it, as, mm. as much as humanly possible. Okay. Um, mm. But uh, I, I watched uh, a press release by the regional government. Mm. I think it was a reply for uh, your organization's uh, press release. So uh, the regional government called your organization war profiters. Mm. And they, they think, or actually they said uh, that uh, you're, you're, uh, you're quitting the election because you want to uh, take arms again. Is that uh, what you're after? So are you planning to, to take up arms again? <laughs> well, this press was written by Mustafa himself. We know that because we know his language. He has been insulting us for the last two years. Oh, do you if think he, he personally wrote this? He message? personally wrote yeah, that his language, his exact mm -hmm. language. We know how, how he talks, the way he writes English. We know even his diction. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the Somali clips for the last two years, he was constantly insulting us as an organization, as persons. He's always saying the same thing again and again, even against the rules of Nebe, which is the political parties cannot insult each other. Mm -hmm. They can say parties this and this is not doing the right thing, but I cannot say, for example, Abi is a thief or Abi is a, a mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. because Abi is a president of a PP party. Mm -hmm. I cannot insult him personally. Mm -hmm. But I can say the PP party is not developing or is not doing good for the, for the, for the country. Mm -hmm. But he has been personally insulting us as a party, as members of the party. So, you know, he was he's breaking the rules of even the, the election rules and party rules. He was actually doing all these things. And this now press release is not a very decent, you know, press release mm -hmm. because it's insulting. We just said, we are not, I can complain about the election process. I can support someone taking a decision. I'm not insulting anybody, but he's personally insulting us. He's instigating us to go to violence. That's what he would like. Uh, that has been trying to do the last two years for us to take our arms so that he can get an opportunity to hurt us. But we 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 we, do, we deny him that, that 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 opportunity, and we hope we will deny him again that. So what's on the shelf for you now? I mean, uh, I, uh, if you if you are going to continue uh, struggling peacefully, what are you planning to do now? Well, uh, first of all, the whole cook is well, the whole Ethiopia is is uh, the same as us. There's a lot of issues within Ethiopia about, you know, these elections, about the, the, the whole kind, 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 about the fighting going on, about the future of Ethiopia. So we are part of that bigger block. We are not isolated. So for us, as a party, there's a new challenge. There's a new challenge, how to struggle peacefully against that antagonistic, uh, you know, uh, uh, regional administration, how to assert our rights without going to violence. That's a big challenge, and that's what we are trying to train our people, that we can struggle for our rights without sorting to guns, but it, it, it depends also on the, on, on the other side. 
Because if you are being killed or put into prison or your members are being harassed, how much can the leadership contain the youth? That will be depends also on the honors on the other side. But for us, we don't have any plans currently to go into an army struggle, and we hope that will be maintained. At least, still the, the agreement is intact, at least on, on the paper, on the paper. But uh, for us, uh, it's very challenging, especially among our, our rank and file. They feel that they have been betrayed. They feel this is not going to happen. They feel the right of the Somali people, especially the local the people, to choose their leaders has been taken away from them. And that resentment, we don't know where it will go. Nobody can guarantee that. Yeah. Why do you think the federal government backed the Somali region, I mean, to do all this? Well, because at this time, the, the federal government is in, in, in war and they don't want any, any, any trouble. They like status quo. So maybe they thought this, at least status quo may be this way. But do they think you somehow support TPLF? Or? Well, this guy always says we support TPLF, but he did not fight how much we fought. We were fighting TPLF for the last 23 years. We, our members died. We lost more than 10,000 fighters. Where was he? Drinking coffee in Westfield in, 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 in Nairobi. Well, how many of our members were, were being detained and put in prison? So the people can say you just support this and this and this. It's, it's like Napoleon, you know, 1984 always. This group always like to label someone with, with the enemy. So we are not supporting anybody. We are, fight, we are struggling for the rights of our people. Uh, different political parties mm. uh, created the election race throughout mm. Ethiopia. Mm. In, in Oromia region, OLF uh, and uh, OFC drop out the election race, they boycotted the election. Mm. And uh, some parties in Walaita and in Ben Shangul also. Do you have a plan to create some kind of grand coalition between uh, these parties? Well, it will depend on, on, you know, you don't create coalitions just because someone is. Is, is against the federal government. Mm. We, the, the, there are certain principles we uphold. Mm. We are a national liberation front that's struggling for the self-determination of, of, of Somali people. Mm. And self-determination is a principle that many people in Ethiopia share. So, for example, it depends on our principles. For example, we have got certain common share uh, values with other parties. More than 20 parties we are already discussing to ally together to defend the right of self-determination of all its people in Ethiopia. For the self-rule, we are against, you know, unitary state. We want a strong self devolved self rule. So we have many parties who are either not, uh, maybe a part, participate in the election, who did not participate. Our principle is to defend that right, defend the right of the of the self determination in the Ethiopian Constitution currently, mm -hmm. and the international, you know, uni universal Charter of the human rights. So the, uh, we could have, that's what we are looking for for many many allies. Is there any talks? Uh, did you did you start anything with with these parties? We have been doing it for the last two years. We have got many parties who are, uh, you know, uh, who, who are ready to defend this, mm. and it will depend on how it works out. Of course, the other parties on the other side. Mm. So uh, uh, so we have got certain. For example, before we had an alliance with OLF and Kimbot Seven. Kimbot Seven always wants a unitary state. OLF wants a, a self-reliant state. But for example, we had certain. On each side, we have a certain principles. For example, with Gimbo 7, we had this agreement. We fight for democratic rights in Ethiopia, for everyone. Mm. So if you agree on that, we can have this difference. For other parties who uh, support democracy and also self-determination, we have got a different type of alliance. So again, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be working throughout Ethiopia because we cannot get our rights alone as Somalis. If, if people in, in Amara or Romia or Tigray or Afar are not getting that right, we will not get that right. So we need a wider alliance. That's our position. That's our, our perception. Yeah. Um, last week, mm -hmm. um, the former uh, Ministry of uh, Women and Youth and Children, if I'm not mistaken, Filson Abdullahi, mm -hmm. uh, tweeted uh, something about uh, a meeting with ONLF leaders. And after her, t after that tweet, it took her like three or four days to uh, resign from her post. Do you have anything to do with her resignation? Uh, I want, I, I want to tell you where I'm coming from. Mm. Um, I heard something that uh, Wilson and you are related uh, in blood, something like that. Mm. I heard a rumor like that. And also, do you think you still have people in the government who supports mm. your idea, your party's idea? Yeah, first of all, for us, it was even a surprise. We didn't expect her to resign. Mm. But we knew her position before. 
because uh, Finson is a very outspoken person. We can follow her on the Twitter and everywhere. She always speaks her, her mind. So we and we believe that she has been doing good work for the for the, for the woman in Ethiopia in general. Mm -hmm. Even who are actually you know uh, complaining about her, not be, she didn't even go to uh, to other cities. Even the, 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 she was born in Tulu, something for the woman. She was working mostly in other parts of Ethiopia. So we are saying you are forgetting her back, back 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 home. Why don't you go to Fik or go to Dagabur or Kapendahar and meet the woman? Uh, all these you know poor women who are being you know. We have got many women, more than hundreds of women who have been raped before, have no rights, nothing. And I have, have you know, mental illness, physical illness. We're telling her, why don't you do something for them? And she was saying, first of all, let me build a bigger Ethiopia, then I can come back to my home. Mm -hmm. So this a, a decision for us even was a surprise. But in principle, that was what we were believing, that if someone can, has a right to express their concerns, that's, a, that's very healthy, well, that's what we believe. That's what we supported. And when we, she came to Jijiga last Saturday, we met her not because of she she was we were talking about this. She asked us a question. We hear Abdi that you you are, you, are, you, are, you are dropping out of the election. Why? She asked us. Are you going back to to fight again? We, she, she was saying, please don't do that. Oh. So she was advising us not to to, to go to war on these things, maintain the peace. So that was a line of discussion. It was nothing about a resignation or about anything like that. As for well, so this concept that she is close to me. That's the mentality of this regional administration. That's what they, they suppose. They want to divide Somali people into clans, tribes, something like that. It's very unfortunate. I am a struggler, or I started one struggle for the Somali people when I was in the teens, 16 years old. And now I'm almost 60 and something. So I was fighting for all Somalis, for all, not only Somalis, for all over the world. I was, I mean, in the early, we were 70s, we were supporting Jaguar, we were for the Jaguar we were supporting for the freedom of the world. In the 60s, 70s, were in the use of youth movement in the anti anti Haile Selassie movement, anti Derg movement. So we were all these, we, we, that's where we were grown up. So this idea of tribalism is in the mind of these people now ruling our, our region. But everything they see in tribal colors. They put us in tribal colors. Abdi is from that tribe, so he's doing this and this. We don't have any such sentiment. We are revolutionary people fighting for the rights of the people. Even now, we don't only fight for Ethiopia, we are Africanist. We want Africa to have one state, to become independent of, you know, China is now developing, Asia, Africa, you know, Europe, America. So that was the other day I was telling you I'm Africanist. Mm -hmm. So they want to put me into a little bag called crime. I will not accept that. That is the innocence of their mind, not only my heart is pure. But mm. they, they accuse you for the same reason. They say, like, he wants to uh, secede Somali and make a smaller country and something like that. Well, uh, right of determination doesn't mean only secession. Mm. It's recognized in the Ethiopian constitution, it's recognized internationally. So it's a right. Everybody has a right to express their right, first of all. But the question is, uh, who is suffering? Is it only Somalis in Ethiopia? Why, 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 is not, why is it not fighting only happening in Somalia? In the Somali state, it happened in Gambela, Benishangul, uh, Oromia, uh, Tigray, Afar, everywhere. These nations are all, all expressing their will. To be more freer, to have self-rule, to be to be recognized. That's a human, human, human essential being of the all human beings. Muslims want to be recognized in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. uh, Christians feel the same. Uh, now we have got uh, many, many, many smaller communities who have no, nobody knows. We've got the Omo who have about 20,000 people. They have also their rights to their land, to have their internal self-determination. So that's not a crime, even if, if you want to, to succeed, it's not a crime. Because if it's a crime, it's not being the Soviet Constitution. If I say today I want to succeed, it's not a crime. But if I try to get it by force, then it becomes a crime. Or maybe that uh, can, can be called crime. But, uh, you know, always these people who want to divide these people, to, all we, we, want to, we want to have a, a, the human being in this, in this country called Ethiopia to be open-minded, to be democratic, to fight for their rights not to become a slave to a, to a state. That's what we tell. The state in Ethiopia owns the people. The people doesn't own the state. The people in this country have been subjected to this for more than centuries. So what we want is a, a liberatory people in Ethiopia who are free-minded. If you go to Europe now, there are no borders. There's no, there's no meaning, border has no meaning. So we, well, that's what we want for, 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 for this area. We don't care about these little flags, any African little flags, they're all begging. We are begging. Europe give us money, China give us money, America give us money. What's the use of the state if you cannot feed your people? 
if you are, if your people are being raped in their, inside their own country, if we are killing each other, so what is the use of this? It means states. That's why for us a state has no meaning. A state in Africa, small state, whether it's come smaller in Somalia or even Ethiopia or even East Horn of Africa. We, our vision is bigger than that. We want to have an Africa that can be developed like any other part in Europe or Asia or Americas. And that's where in the end we go. Hmm. So if uh, you read the uh, many things about self-determination, hmm. I also prepared one question uh, hmm. for you on that. Hmm. As a chairman of ONLF, hmm. uh, parties that fought for self-determination for almost more than two, two decades, if, yeah. if I'm correct. Hmm. So I think self-determination is at stake now in, in Ethiopia. Hmm. Uh, if you follow the mainstream media, they're all against self-determination, they are all against Article 39. Yeah. They said we were one people uh, with one identity and one religion, and etc. Uh, you, you know the details, I hope. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, the coming new government uh, will entertain the idea of uh, at least removing Article 39 from the Constitution. So what, what do you think? is uh, the future for Somali peoples look like? Well, I don't think about only Somali people. Mm. If that happens, and you know, Article 39, the right of solution of states is taken away, I think Ethiopia will go back to the 60s. Simple. Mm. We'll, go, we'll start the whole cycle again. Another cycle of wars, cycle of you know, liberation fronts, cycle of fighting for people. So we continue the same story again. Go back, instead of going forward, we'll go backwards, and history doesn't go backwards. It's just a small time will happen only. The people in this country have been fighting for almost a century. It's not only Somalis who are fighting. Oromos are fighting, and, and Afars are fighting, Gambians are fighting, Minishangles are fighting. Everybody is fighting. So it's not only any, any small nation in Ethiopia will be fighting for its right. Do you so, so if you think, just if we have this imaginary idea of one Ethiopia, it's not, it's not true. Go to Somali state, only, only the elite, few elites speak Amharic. They don't know the Amharic language. I don't know the Amharic language. I don't have uh, any idea about it. I don't eat the same food, I don't close, take the same clothes, I don't have the same religion with many of them. So to become one, first of all, diversity has to be respected. And then we we'll respect each other, then we we'll love each other, we we'll become together. Mm. Now you are not killing me, I can talk to you now here, safely here, I'm not in the summer, because it's peaceful, I'm respected. But if I don't, if my identity is not respected, tomorrow I will be in the bush. So what we need is really to think very, very careful about this idea, not to be idealistic and to, to, to build castle in the air. The Ethiopian people have fought 100 years to achieve a, a measure of self-determination. And that is a good beginning. And instead of taking that back, we should speak about how to make it a reality, how every nation can have its own peaceful government, and then we can come together and work together Later, we, that can develop into a bigger state. So they, I don't see any reason why that should not happen. This idea that we are going to put it together people by force, and then what will be the result? Wars. One is already happening. There will be others coming. It's not only here. So what is the use of having a state then if the, if the people are killing each other? Just because somebody in, in a palace thinks that this is the best idea, it's not. It will be actually based on the, on the feeling of the people at the grassroots. From not the elite, the elite, especially the elite that's now very, very active now, mm. are not representing the real people in all of Ethiopia. And it's not only Somali. And that is why this question is always problematic. So if it's, okay, it's good to, for example, some people to have that idea, but it should be discussed, it should be a mold over, it will take years to, and then national dialogue come together. And then we, we see, okay, this, someone can try to convince me why this is right. And I'll try to convince them why, why this is right. We talk through that. That's how the world is changing. But if someone just says, I'm big, I'm powerful, I'm going to force it, ram it on your throat, then people will react. Nobody will, if I talk, take you and cut you now with your nose and mouth and say, okay, this is good for you, you will react. So that's what we believe. For us, all love, we are pro self determination, we don't hide it. We believe in that. We believe the minimum we accept is our self rule as the minimum. And we are, because, of, because we feel, uh, uh, we, we have historical grievances, we, have, we still we feel we are marginalized. And so there are reasons why we want that. So people should ask us, why do you want this? Not this right or wrong. 
Mm. Yeah. I want to ask you about that marginalization mm. uh, thing, but first, mm. don't you think states have the power to uh, assimilate different nations and nationalities into some kind of one identity or a so-called Ethiopian identity? Oh, so who is the state representing? The state is maybe representing some uh, some ethnic group some, within Ethiopia some, some group. or the core ethnic group yeah. within Ethiopia. So, some, so, so, yeah. so it doesn't represent the others. Yeah, it doesn't represent the others. So, therefore, that's force. A force brings force. Yeah. Every action brings reaction. So you think um, every nation and nationalities will react and again uh, retake the federal government if that happens? Of course, I believe that. It will start in Al-Sawa, not in the Somali state. Even in Al-Sawa, it will yeah. start. That's what, what, what I believe. What do you think the federal government will do in the next three or four months? Well, I think the federal government, first of all now, they are very insecure now, they don't have the government. But once they, they come to seat, they come to power, and if this war stops, mm. I think they may be more reasonable than now. Oh. Because they will have more confidence, they try to solve things. Okay, you think the war is making them unreasonable? Well, the war is making them very uneasy. Of course, you cannot, this is a very serious war. It's not an easy war. But the narration uh, was already existing before, even before the war. And some people even think that the war begins because of this kind of narration. I mean, a more centralized kind of narration. Well, for, for me, I'm hopeful that, you know, the reason works and they rethink what they're doing. That's what that's my belief. Because before they wanted to come to power for whatever narrative, but now when they go to power, they have got at least five years to at least settle. So why, why rock the boat? Why do they want to rock the boat? What advantage will they have? They wanted before to catch power, okay, now they've got power. Nobody's challenging them. So now they're in power, so they should be more reasonable and consider every other aspect, every other views. I think that is what reason dictates. Otherwise, I don't know. Okay, so about the marginalization thing, uh, many people, especially in the mainstream media said every uh, everybody in Ethiopia lives equally in the history, <laughs> back in the history. They lived equally, they cherish uh, Ethiopia in it and everything else. They fought together, uh, they even fought their body <laughs> and all, all the, I know you know the narratives. Mm -hmm. So what, what was the marginalization? And in your uh, press release, you said the, the, the marginalization of the Somali people has continued even now. Yeah. What, what has continued now and what was it? What was the marginalization back in the days? If you go to Oromia, you see the banks. 90% people are working there are Oromos. If you go to Amhara, you see who people are working in the federal, federal offices everywhere. Mm -hmm. All of them are Amharas. Go to Somali state. 90%, 99% is people from the north. There are no Somalis working there. Why? Why, why, why is it different? If you go to the airport in Jigjiga, only the porters walk, as Somalis walk there. If you go to the federal police in Gigi everywhere, they're all from, from, from the top, from the, uh, from the whatever island. I cannot know exactly where they are from. So why, does, why, why is it so? Why, 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 why Somalis after 100 years being under Ethiopian rule, why, why are they still the same? Why is it happening? It's simple, I show you, it's a simple way. Come to Addis Ababa. There are more than 3 million federal, federal government employees. I don't know how much. How many are Somalis? You, you can never know. Go to the to the Jibri everywhere, everywhere in, in Jigjiga, everywhere, everywhere. No, no, no Somali is walking there. Only one, maybe one, one cosmetic individual is walking there. So mm. people feel they are not part of this state, that they are under occupation. The, the federal army there, one person is not Somali. So why? So you have to ask those questions. Why? How many ambassadors are there of Ethiopian ambassadors? How many are Somalis? Even one, five. Can you call one ambassador? You will never see one, one there's not one single Somali ambassador for the last 20 years, for the last 50 years. So that's the type of barriers you are talking about. Okay, if you look at Why the, is that? What's the reason behind this? Well, well I, I don't know. Ask, you should ask the federal government, why is this happening? Hmm. Why is this happening? So, so that's the minimum that you can see. We are the third largest Ethiopia. If, if, you, if you look at the Somali territory, it's one third of Ethiopia is Somali territory. We are the third largest population in Ethiopia, as, as, as a population. One more. Somalis are the third. First, I'm Oromo, Amara, Somali is the third one in, in population wise. So, what, what effort do we have? What is, what is the role we are playing in the Ethiopian state? state? What, what role do we have? You know? 
go to there. There's only one single FM radio from Adi Sawa. If you go to Adi Sawa here, you get 60 Amharic speaking radios, 20 Aurora speaking radios, they move everything. Why is there no radios on Somali state? Well, that's, if you go there, for example, in three regions, you see a car for three days. After three days, you go not even, there are no roads, you, you can't see transport, you can't see anything. So that is why what Spitzberg is speaking about is very clearly. So the ground, I would like you to go there and do it. Now it's very peaceful. Go to a tower and see what, how the Somalis are living. So that, that's why we say we are marginalizing. We are not getting the pie of the state together like others. We should have, uh, okay, let's say population-wise, even census there is wrong. Yeah, they're saying we are six million, but we are not six million, we know. We are more than that. So what are we getting from the, the, the federal pie? The federal pie is for all people, for all people of Ethiopia. Every state has got their own thing, and every, the federal pie is between all. We are not getting the right share there. And we, not only that, even within our, our territory, we are, every federal state employment, we are minority there. There's not a single Somali bank. Now they're trying to do something. So there's a lot of issues there that can point to marginalization. You feel that you are not part of this state. Do you think one of the reasons for this uh, might be uh, the federal working language? Well, this well, we have only uh, one. We, well, it yeah. could be. It could be. But uh, the question is, why, why, why are uh, Romans speaking Amhara? Why are uh, the Lebu people are speaking Amhara? Why are the Bilisha people speak? Why does someone don't speak? Why are they? They have no school. Why have not been good teachers to teach them? So uh, language can be learned in six months. You go to English, you can quickly learn language six to eight months, one year. If you go to school, you can master these basics. So it's not only language, it's an institutional, you know, injustice. There is institutional injustice. We feel that we are being marginalized. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is all the questions I have. And I am really honored to have you here. So I want to say thank you for uh, coming here. Thank you very much, Osama. We are really to see young people in media very much. Is there anything left you want to say? No, just we want to disperse one idea that, you know, we are Somali, we don't only fight for Somalis, we stand for justice. We want the Amhara people to have justice, the Oromo people to have justice, the Tigrinya people to have justice, the Afars to have justice, and many other nations. There are more than 80 nations, I cannot know, name all. We want every one of them, the smallest to the biggest. We can live all in peace together when we respect each other and we really listen to each other. But if there's only monologue, I speak, you listen. You hear to me, obey me. And that is not going to work for anybody in the world. So that's my message to all Ethiopians. Let's come together and talk and let's respect each other. And that's the way forward. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Well, this was all for you today. We uh, want to thank uh, our guest, Mr. Abdurrahman Mahadi. And thank you all for uh, watching our show. Mm -hmm.